Welcome to Python Advance 3, OptPass. In this video, we'll be looking at option passing, what it is, how to use it, and why to use it. If you've ever seen any of my Hacking with Python videos, you will already have a fair understanding of how OptPass works. Every video will have all slideshows and code available in the description. OptPass is a standard module that comes with Python. It allows for easy and neat option and argument handling for our Python programs. Also, by default, it will construct help output for outputting to the console. OptPass works by interfacing with the Python system module, taking the command line arguments and assessing whether they are an option or an argument. If it's neither, it is ignored. Options are usually a dash and then a letter. Arguments can be just data from the user and can also be set up to be only taken after an option. These options and arguments come after the program in the command line. Ok, so now we know how it works, let's have a close look as we build a quick program to test out the OptPass module on. Let's create a program that outputs the nth Fibonacci number. We will have a required option for the program to calculate to, and we'll also have an optional for outputting to a file. Also, we'll put in an option to output all of the Fibonacci's to the nth number. Ok, so let's create a file called fibn.py. Okay, so I'll come over to my Ubuntu here, open up my terminal, and change the directory to advanced pi. Okay, now I'm going to create my file, so uh, vim fib n.py. Okay, so I'm going to import optpass, of course. So import optpass, and we're going to define a fib function, which will do our calculating. Okay, so add define fib, and it's going to take n for a number to count to, and we'll also pass in a boolean print to determine whether we want to print it out or not. Okay, so inside our fib function, we're going to define two variables, a and b, and they're going to start off as 0 and 1. And we're going to create a for loop, because we know what number we want to count up to. So for i in range n, we're going to do some addition. So we're going to store into A and B. We're going to store into A, we're going to store B. And we're going to store into B, A plus B. Okay. Now we're going to test our Boolean print. So if print, then we're going to print A. So what the current value is. Okay. Now, once it's completed our function, our fib function, we're going to return what the nth number is, so a. Okay. So that's our fib function done. Now let's create our main function, which will handle all of our opt pass stuff. So def main. And inside our main we're going to create a parser object, so parser, and we're going to make that equal to opt pass, so the opt pass object, and it's going to be an option parser, option parser, and we'll create quickly create it what its usage is, so just in case they stuff it up when they're um, trying to use our program, so usage. And we'll use the keyword percent prog, so it'll do the name of our program. And then close those quotes and do a plus backslash, which allows us to go down to the next line. And we'll tab in. And we'll open up our quotes again and do dash n. So the number, the fib number. So we'll do fib number. And we'll close those. And then we'll do dash o, which will be the output file output file 
and we also got a dash a which is a print all okay so we'll close that off and we'll also add a version argument so version equals open quotes percent prog so the current program well that's going off screen just resize that okay so we got our percent prog and it's version 1.0 at the moment and we'll close our quotes and the brackets okay so we'll come down to the next line and we're going to start adding some options to our parser so parser oops, parser dot add underscore option so we're going to add an option and we're going to add the dash n option which we'll place into the destination variable dest and it's going to be called num okay and now that's going to be type int so type equals int and then we'll do a backslash here to go down to the next line tab in and our help for this so our help is equal to specify the nth because uh, we want it to use a comma we just use a double apostrophe and that will come up as an apostrophe single apostrophe in the string so the nth fibonacci number to output and we'll close that off so that's our first option added now we'll add another option so our parser dot add underscore option and this is going to be our output option so dash o oops dash o and similar our dest is going to be equal to uh let's call it out and that's going to be type string because it's a file name uh, we'll backslash again. Oops. Let's go down to the next line. Tab in. Our help will be specify uh, an output file, and then we'll put in brackets optional. And we'll end quotes and end that uh, option, and we'll add our last option which will be our our all so parser dot add underscore option and this will be our dash a and what we'll also use is we'll create another code so we'll do a uh, dash dash all so they can use either dash a or they can use dash dash all and the action for this one is going to be a store true so action equals uh, store underscore true so this will store a true value into our destination so our dest is going to be equal to print because that's the variable we want to put it in so print and We'll go uh, back a line. So we'll use our backslash, go down. And we're going to have a default, because just in case they don't uh, they don't uh, put in a value, so they don't they don't specify that they want to output all of them. So our default is going to equal false. And help is going to equal uh, print all numbers up to n and then we'll close off those quotes and we close our option okay on the next line 
we're going to uh, retrieve past the options now. So options and args uh, equal to parser dot pass underscore args. Okay. So now that that's retrieved, uh, we can start to checking our checking how uh, what's been entered. Okay. So if uh, our option dot num so our number option uh, is equal to none so it hasn't been hasn't been entered they haven't given us a number then what we're going to do is print out the uh, parser dot usage uh, don't think that needs brackets actually yeah print parser usage and then we're going to uh, exit with system code zero. Okay, now if it is there, then we're going to have our else statement, which will uh, set the variable number to equal option dot num. Okay, now we'll, let's create a variable called result. So result is going to get a number from the fib function which we created earlier and we're going to pass it number and we're also going to give it the boolean from option dot print so that'll give it either a true or false okay so on the next line we're going to print out what the result is so let's make it fancy so print the close quotes plus str number close brackets plus open quotes th so the whatever number fib fib number is close quotes plus a string of the result Okay, so now that's done. What we're going to do is we're going to check if they wanted to output it to a file. So if options dot out does not equal none, then we're going to open a file. So f equals uh, open, and we're going to pass in options dot out and we'll put it in uh, append mode so that it keeps adding to that file and then we're going to f dot write uh, the string of result plus plus a backslash n for a new line inside that right okay so that's our main written so let's just write our finishing if so if underscore underscore name underscore underscore is equal to that's going to main underscore underscore then we're going to run main okay so let's uh, uh, right quit this and let's give it a shot so uh, python fib n dot py and then we're going to give it a dash n so dash n and let's do 10 oh we got an error um, option num global name option oh missed an s open back get back up sorry um, so if options uh, dot num sorry and we going to put that on print as well this ds And on yeah, oops okay now let's right quit that again oops right quit. and let's try running it again okay so the tenth Fibonacci number is 55 
So let's try running it with something else like 20. The 20th fib number is 6765. Okay, so let's try outputting it to a file. So let's do 10 again, but we'll do o to test.txt. So our program executed. Now we should be able to go vim test.txt and we get the number 55 has been outputted to our file here. Okay, so let's leave this and let's try running it this time without the uh, output option, but we'll put the A option on for, to print out all of the numbers up to that. Okay, so we get 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34 and 55. Okay, so that worked correctly. Let's try it with a higher number maybe. So if we do, we'll do our 20 as we did earlier. And there we go, we get all of the Fibonacci numbers up to 6,765. Okay, cool. Now, uh, so why should we use this module? Well, OpPass is great for streamlining your program for professional use. It's easy to use and comes standard with Python, so it saves you time by constructing help and usage with simple expressions. Formats the help and usage for command line output. Overall, it allows us to make dynamic changes to our program operation by using simple options and on execution. Some extra things to note about OpPass is that the module can be extended by making a subclass of OpPass and adding your own actions and inbuilt standard options. Creating your own help output and writing how the module deals with bad input. Though extending OpPass can be a little difficult, so most of the time it can be avoided by using the callback action. The callback action allows you to call a function if the option is detected. If you want to send arguments to this function, it becomes a little more difficult. I recommend following the instructions on the Python's docs. That said, a full written tutorial is available on each of OpPass's features and can be found in the Python docs. A link will be in the description. I hope you now feel confident enough to add OpParser to your programs and make it more streamlined and hopefully more dynamic. Next, we are going to cover regular expressions. Thanks for watching.